If you need to, please take a moment to pause the video and reread the problem before listening on. The first thing that's going on in the problem is that the switch S is thrown to the left side until capacitor one reaches equilibrium. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna go ahead and close the switch right there and charges won't be able to flow through this portion of the circuit so we can essentially eliminate it. And so we're left with this very simple circuit consisting of a battery and a capacitor. And what happens is if we wait a little bit of time, the capacitor is going to fully charge and reach equilibrium. And we can calculate how much charge will be stored on that capacitor. We can do that because we know that the amount of charge stored on that capacitor is going to equal the capacitance multiplied by the potential difference across the plates. Now the potential difference across the plates will eventually be the same as the potential difference supplied by the battery. So in other words, the V is going to equal the 10 volts. So we can go ahead and plug in the known values. C1 is 10 microfarads. And again, we'll multiply that by 10 volts. And when we do that, we can see that the total amount of charge stored on C1 is 100, and it's going to be in microcoulombs since we plugged in microfarads. That's not the only thing that's going on in the question, of course. The next thing that happens is that the switch is thrown to the right. So let's go ahead and redraw the circuit in that condition. So there we go. Now, in this case, the section of the circuit right here, the one that contains the battery, is no longer relevant since charge can't flow through that portion anymore. And so we have this circuit right here. And the question is, well, when equilibrium is reached again, how much charge is on capacitor 1? Now, capacitor 1 started out at 100 microcoulombs. But what's going to happen is that the 100 microcoulombs is going to redistribute itself across the three capacitors. So we expect that the amount of charge on the plates of C1 is going to be reduced. But how do we do this? Well, the key idea is that charge is going to be conserved. So if we start out with 100 microcoulombs, we should still have 100 microcoulombs distributed across the plates. So we can write that algebraically as the following. The total amount of charge, which is the 100 microcoulombs, is going to equal the charge on capacitor 1, plus the charge on capacitor 2, plus the charge on capacitor 3. And since, again, the total amount of charge was 100 microcoulombs, we might as well plug that in right now. So 100 microcoulombs goes there. That's great. But what else is true about this arrangement of capacitors? Well, they are arranged in parallel with each other. And perhaps you've learned in this chapter that when you have parallel capacitors, the potential difference across the plates of each capacitor is the same. So what we could say is that V1 is equal to V2, which is equal to V3. Now, revisiting the equation that relates charge, capacitance, and potential difference, if we solve that for potential difference, we would divide both sides by the capacitance. So we could say charge divided by capacitance is equal to potential difference, which means that we could rewrite this triple equality here. We could take V1 and we could rewrite that as Q1 over C1. And the same thing with V2 and V3. We'll have Q2 over C2, and that's going to equal Q3 over C3. Now the capacitance values C1 through C3 were given, so let's plug those in. And then interestingly, if we go through this equation and multiply every term by 20 microfarads, so we're just kind of multiplying everybody by 20, these 20s will cancel as will those, and then over here you have 20 divided by 10, which is 2. So we now can see that 2Q1 is going to equal Q2, which is going to equal Q3. And that's really helpful because let's go back and grab this equation right here. We're going to be able to kind of combine these up and solve for Q1. So looking carefully, Q2 is equal to 2Q1, but Q3 is also equal to 2Q1. So we can make those substitutions here. Q2 is going to be 2Q1, and Q3 is also 2Q1. We are on the verge of solving for Q1. We can add the terms on the right-hand side. That's going to give us 5Q1, and then divide both sides by 5. And you end up getting 20 microcoulombs is the charge on capacitor 1 after the switch was thrown to the right. So our prediction was correct. Recall we sort of predicted that... The initial amount of charge on C1, which, which was 100 microcoulombs, was going to get redistributed, and therefore the charge on C1 should reduce, and lo and behold, it did. It only carries now 20 microcoulombs of charge 
on each plate. 